Okay, so in this video, we will prove or look at properties of the inverse. The first property is, well, the D implies uniqueness of the inverse. So if, a, if, a, um, if an inverse of A exists, it actually is unique. And that's why we can say the inverse of A and not just A inverse. Well, how do you prove uniqueness? The proof in itself is not very interesting, but the idea is, how do you prove that anything is unique? The idea is, as soon as there are two such objects, and prove that they have to be the same. And this proves uniqueness. Suppose we have a square matrix A, and that we have two inverses. Suppose that B is an inverse of A, and so A times B would equal B times A, which equal I. And suppose that we have a second inverse of A, call it C. So C would have the same property. A times C would equal C times A would equal I. What we want to show now is that simply put B equals C. If you take any two inverses of A and they are always equal, this proves that there really is only one inverse of A. Well, let's prove it. Let's start with B. We'll quite simply put B is B times I. Well, we can make a substitution. I is AC, so we'll replace I by AC, so this is B times AC. We know multiplication is associative, so we could do BA times C. But B is the inverse of A. Well, sorry, B is A in the inverse of A, and so B times A is also equal to I. So we get I times C, but I times C is simply C. And this proves that B must equal C. So if you take any two inverses of the matrix A, they have to be equal to each other, which concludes our proof of uniqueness. Hence, if A has an inverse, its inverse is unique. Okay, what other properties does the inverse possess? Let's list them. What if I look at the inverse of A and I ask, what is the inverse of this matrix? Well, if you invert the inverse of A, you will get A back. Of course, this looks you know, intuitive, but we'll still have to prove it. Property 2. Well, if A is invertible, is its transpose invertible? And if so, how do you find the inverse? Well, here's the result. If A is invertible, A transpose is also invertible, and the inverse of A transpose happens to be the transpose of A inverse. And so if you have found the inverse of A, and you ask what is the inverse of the transpose, well, simply take your inverse, transpose it, and you have it. Third property. What if you multiply a matrix A that is invertible by a non-zero real number? And you ask, is this invertible? And if so, what is its inverse? Well, the answer is, the result is invertible, and it will simply be the inverse of K. As K is a real number, the inverse of a real number is 1 over itself, times the inverse of matrix A. And this is for any non-zero real number k. So if a is invertible, any non-zero multiple of it is also invertible, and the inverse of ka is 1 over k, a inverse. Next property. This one is a bit more interesting. What if you have two invertible matrices, a and b, and you ask, is the product invertible? And if so, what is its inverse? The answer is yes. If A and B are both invertible matrices, A times B is invertible, and the inverse happens to be the inverse of each matrix, but you have to change the order. This will not be A inverse times B inverse, but instead it will be B inverse times A inverse. You can ask, naturally, what if you have a product of three matrices? 
How would that play out? If A, B, C are invertible, the product is invertible, and the inverse, you can probably guess, would be the inverse of each matrix, but multiplied in the exact opposite order. So it would be C inverse first, then B inverse, and finally A inverse. So in general, we can extend this now. If you have a product of, let's say, N invertible matrices, so A1 times A2 up to AN, if every matrix is invertible, the product is also invertible, and the inverse of this product is simply the product of the inverses, but multiplied in the complete opposite order. So AN inverse first, then AN minus 1 inverse, all the way down to A, oops, AN minus 1 inverse, A2 inverse, A1 inverse. So always be careful. A product of invertible matrices is invertible, but the inverse of the product is the product of the inverses and the opposite order. The consequence of this is if you take the inverse of, say, the nth power of A, where n is a positive integer, this will simply be the same as the nth power of the inverse. So this is true for any positive integer n. So the inverse of a to the n is simply the nth power of a inverse. And those are the key properties of the inverse. Now let's prove, say, two together, and I'm going to leave the others as exercises. The key is simply to rewrite the equality into a short sentence. And you'll see how easy all of these are actually to prove. We'll prove the first property and, say, the fourth property. And every proof about the inverse of a matrix being another matrix is done in the exact same way. So think of what is the statement in 1. 1 says the inverse of this matrix, let's write that down, because the negative 1 exponent is a shorthand for saying the inverse of the matrix inside the brackets. So the left-hand side here says the inverse of this, which is A inverse. Okay, so the inverse of A inverse is equal to this matrix, which is A. And now we have a translation. We have translated the mathematical equality into a short sentence. The claim is the inverse of this matrix is equal to this matrix. Well, how do you prove that such a statement is true? right? The inverse of this matrix is this one if their product is equal to i. That is the defining property of an inverse. An inverse will cancel the matrix via multiplication. Well, let's verify this. So we have to multiply this matrix with this one and make sure the result is i. Well, this is obvious because by definition, A inverse is the inverse of A. And so A inverse times A is I. And this completes the proof. Not much to do. That was a warm-up. This really was just for the translation part. Let's prove property 4. Now this is more interesting, as it won't be so trivial. Again, we have to translate the mathematical equality into a short sentence. Well, what is this saying? Once again, the negative exponent means the inverse of. So the left-hand side says the inverse of AB. Okay, that takes care of the left-hand side. The inverse of AB is equal to which matrix? Well, this one. The inverse of AB is equal to this matrix, B inverse, A inverse. 
and now we have the translation. We can forget the mathematical equality and prove instead the translation into a short sentence, as both statements are equivalent. Once again, how do we prove such a statement? Well, the inverse of AB is equal to this matrix, once again, to prove that a matrix is the inverse of another matrix, we simply have to multiply both and make sure the end result is i. And the order doesn't matter. I can either do this one times this one or this one times this one. Just for fun we'll do both. But know that only one direction is sufficient. Let's do this matrix times this one. If the result is i then indeed this matrix is the inverse of this one. So B inverse, inverse, times AB. Once again here we will take advantage of associativity of multiplication. We have here B inverse times A inverse, then times A times B. But we can perform either this multiplication or this one or this one first. We'll do the middle one first. This will be B inverse times a inverse times A times B. But by definition, A inverse is the inverse of A. And so the result here is simply equal to I. So we'll have B inverse times I times B. Once again, multiplication is associative, so we can perform this multiplication, but I times B is simply B. And so we're left with B inverse times B. And once again, by definition, B inverse is the inverse of B, and so the result is equal to I. And so indeed, B inverse times A inverse times AB is equal to I. This completes the proof. Just for check, let's look at the other direction. What if we had done AB times B inverse A inverse? Once again, we take advantage of matrix multiplication being associative. This will be A times B times B inverse times A inverse. B times B inverse is equal to I. Associativity A, uh, I times A inverse is A inverse. We have A times A inverse, and by definition, A inverse is the inverse of A, and so A times A inverse is equal to I. And this completes the proof. So always keep this in mind. For every other property of the inverse, look at the left hand side of each one. All it says is the inverse of the matrix is another matrix. Rewrite the equality into a short sentence. And to prove that the inverse of a matrix is another matrix, you go back to the definition, proving that the product of both matrices in either direction is equal to i. And that's it.